Did you know that certain lifestyle and diet changes can play a part in improving certain eye conditions and surgical outcomes? That's one of the many fascinating topics we'll be discussing with Dr. Kimberly Tice on this episode of OcuTalk. Dr. Tice? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Powell Vision Center in Powell, Ohio, Dr. Kimberly Tice. Dr. Tice, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And uh, Dr. Tice, before we get started, I was hoping that maybe you can explain your background and your specialty to our viewers. Yes, I am Dr. Kimberly Tice. I am a 2006 graduate of The Ohio State University College of Optometry. I also have a degree in food science from Ohio State. I started my optometric career working in ophthalmology practices, doing mostly medical optometry and seeing a lot of the surgical patients pre and post operatively. We did mainly cataract surgery, um, laser vision correction and oculoplastics or surgery of the eyelids. I currently practice in an optometry setting, seeing full scope patients from a comprehensive exam, fitting lots of contact lenses, treating dry eye, and still seeing those pre and post operative um, cataract patients and evaluations. Excellent. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're very busy. Uh, But Dr. Tice, uh, I just wanted to ask, do you consult a lot with your pre-surgical patients? And what concerning things are you looking out for when you do? Yes. um, Majority of my patients are in the 50 to 70 age bracket, which means they might just be starting to develop cataracts or maybe they're ready for surgery already. So my job is to really prepare them for what's to come. And I want my patient to have the very best outcome when they do have their cataract surgery. So in order to have the very best outcomes, we really need to start with a very healthy eyelid and cornea and tear film. So I'm always looking very closely for dry eye and treating that before I send them to the surgeon for surgery. These patients really get excited when they could be maybe free from glasses for most things. And a lot of these new premium IOLs do allow for that. We have great distance vision, intermediate vision, and near vision, but it really takes a healthy eyeball to make that happen. So I'm really working with um, treating the dry eye before sending them to the surgeon. There was a a recent study that was pretty interesting that showed nearly 80% of patients that arrive at the surgeon's office actually have undiagnosed dry eye. And that's just going to slow down the process for the patient and the surgeon. So it's just really, um, we need to take better care of our patients and really treat that dry eye before, before surgery. Dr. Tice, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what pre-op and post-op protocols you recommend for patients and why it's important for them to have better outcomes? Yes, to have the very best um, cataract surgery outcome, we really want a stable tear film. We want a healthy cornea and very clean eyelids without bacteria and Demodex present. And that's going to give us the very best um, accurate measurements that we're going to take when we're selecting that premium IOL. So we really want to make sure that we we address the dry eye prior to surgery. And we also want to make sure that we really clean the lids and lashes well before surgery to prevent any risk of getting um, a really bad infection during the process. So I like to follow the DUCE 2 protocol which is educating the patient on dry eye. Um, We would change some lifestyle and diet uh, things. We're gonna apply warm compresses to the front of the eye and then really address the lid cleaning with lid wipes and lid foam, um, possibly hypochlorous acid. I like to use a lipid based artificial tear such as Retain MGD, one of my favorites. Sometimes the patient might need nighttime ointment or nighttime goggles to protect the front surface of the eye. 
Then, of course, we have wonderful prescriptions. We can write lephritograss, cyclosporin, autogolous tears, biologics, or lodopredinol. And then there are also a lot of in-office treatments we can do from a lid cleaning to even a um, warming up the lids with a, a thermal process and then expressing those oil glands. So all of those are going to be really important to have the best surgical outcome. Dr. Tice, when discussing dry eye and MGD, how do lifestyle changes and diet changes help improve our eye care health? Yes. Um, you probably heard the saying, you are what you eat. And I think that is so true for our body and especially for our eyes. So I like to recommend our patients eat just a very healthy, clean diet. What that means are whole foods, things without a label on them, things that are not prepackaged. And if it does have a label or a packaging, can you understand and read the words that are on there? So that's really what a whole clean food is, just something that is in its natural state. So by trying to eat five colors a day, that's one of my goals, five colors a day, that's hopefully going to give us all the vitamins and nutrients that our eyes and our body need. Um, the eyes really would need vitamin A, C, D, B6, and B12. Um, I also recommend always drinking a lot of water. We need to hydrate our bodies and our eyes. My rule of thumb is take your body weight, cut it in half, and that's about how many ounces of water we should be drinking a day. Um, decreasing sugar, decreasing caffeine, and decreasing alcohol are always recommended. And then just some lifestyle changes that are important. Um, we need to blink. We are addicted to our devices. Um, even in cataract surgery, patients just love to be on our phone and our iPad. So more blinking, less time on the devices. Um, ceiling fans, we want to turn those off when we're sleeping. But adding in a humidifier can really be helpful at nighttime. No smoking or vaping. And then we talk about um, even makeup removal at nighttime, um, staying off the waterline for makeup, and no shimmery makeup or sparkly makeup. Those are just some lifestyle things that I like to incorporate into um, my dry eye protocols. Well, you heard it there, folks. Uh, better health means better eyes from Dr. Tice herself. Dr. Tice, uh, when it comes to nutritional supplements, what do you think about it as when it comes to overall health of the eye? Yes. So with um, nutritional supplements, the one I usually use is definitely an omega-3, um, a very high quality omega-3 that our body can readily absorb. And there's several great ones that are on the market for eye care, especially. Um, so I, I think that is important for the quality of the mybome or the oil in our tears, and also to reduce the inflammation in our eyelids. Um, so I, I do like to do um, the omega-3 supplements. You know, other things that are good for the cornea and the conjunctiva would be a vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B6 and B12. But I really like to get those just through a good, healthy, whole food diet. Well, perfect. Excellent. I, I, that, that's fantastic. And um, actually, uh, one question I wanted to ask Dr. Tice, if you don't mind me asking, it, do you know of any new developments that you see on the eye care horizon that we can be on the lookout for? Uh, something that you may have been look, looking out for yourself? Yes, absolutely. You know, vision care is always changing. That's one of the things I love about our profession um, is, is treating patients, but then all these new advances that can always help us all the time. So there will hopefully be some contact lenses that will come out that will actually have medication embedded in them um, to help us better treat allergies, possibly even glaucoma. Um, I think there's going to be some eye drops in the near future that will help us as we start to lose our up close reading ability in our 40s. So, yeah, lots of things to be looking out for in the future. Well, I, I'm sure a lot of people will be excited about those new developments. I couldn't even imagine having a contact lens that would help us out with those allergies. That's pretty amazing. Um, and actually, Dr. Tice, before we go, is there anything that you would like to tell our audience um, yeah, if you have any questions for me or just want to follow me, you can um, catch me on Instagram. My handle is dr. Period Kimberly Tice. That's a dr. Period Kimberly Tice. And I'd be happy to answer any other questions or engage in conversation about um, dry eye or cataract surgery or uh, anything I care. Well, excellent. There you go. Follow Dr. Tice on Instagram. And then you can see her at Powell Vision Center in Powell, Ohio. Again, Dr. Kimberly Tice, thank you so much for joining us today. 
My pleasure. Thank you, Nick.